So in 2019, the United Methodist Church had its once for all special call general conference where the conservative evangelical voice won the day. People often forget this. But they came up with, they adopted the traditional plan, even though it was gutted, um, to galvanize the denomination for an evangelical direction, graciously allowing uh, any local churches that didn't want to be a part of it to leave in paragraph 2553. This was before they had calculated the uh, unfunded pension liabilities. They would have, they, they were not okay with uh, how steep that price ended up being. But uh, after that uh, general conference, there were a lot of institutions belonging to the United Methodist Church that were not comfortable at all with the new direction of the denomination, the conservative evangelical direction. And so local churches could disaffiliate, but what about colleges that were affiliated with the United Methodist Church? How could they get loose? Well, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, they decided to just straight up leave the United Methodist Church. And so they, uh, as I recall, kicked off the United Methodist leadership from the Board of Trustees and declared their independence from the United Methodist Church. And ever since then, there's been a lawsuit going on. So there have been recent developments in that lawsuit. This article, Texas Supreme Court will hear case on SMU break with the United Methodist Church. This is at WFAA.com. I don't even know what WFFA is. Uh, the Texas Supreme Court set oral arguments in the case of SMU and the United Methodist Church's South Central Jurisdictional Conference for January 2025. So remember, um, a lot of missions and ministries are overseen and owned not by annual conferences, but by the larger unit jurisdictional conferences, a, a collaborative of, of uh, many annual conferences. So this is not a long article. It says the Texas Supreme Court will hear arguments in a case that could determine whether or not SMU can cut ties with the regional governing body of the United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church's South Central Jurisdictional Conference, which runs the church's congregations in eight states, including Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, New Mexico, Missouri, and Nebraska, sued SMU in 2019. It owns three institutions, according to its website, including SMU. The other one is uh, the one at the southern border, Lydia Patterson Institute. I forget the other one besides that. The lawsuit revolves around SMU's decision to effectively declare itself independent from the denomination's regional governing body. The university's board of trustees voted in November of 2019 to update its governing documents, quote, to make clear that SMU is solely maintained and controlled by its board as the ultimate authority for the university. SMU's decision came amid a split within the United Methodist Church over issues of the ordination of LGBTQ clergy and same-sex marriages within the church. The United Methodist Church voted in February of 2019 to endorse the so-called traditional plan, which strengthened the church's bans on ordaining LGBTQ clergy and hosting same-sex marriage. The UMC South Central Jurisdictional Conference then sued SMU, arguing it had, has jurisdiction over the university and the university needed its approval to make the changes to its governing language. The conference claimed in the lawsuit that it founded SMU in 1911 with an initial gift of 133 acres of land. Quote, this lawsuit has become necessary because of recent unauthorized acts by representatives of SMU in violation of the jurisdiction's rights and interests. Even as we value our historical relationship with the church, SMU is distinct from the church. Okay, so this is a quote from SMU. Nothing changes in SMU's day-to-day -day operations as a result of this action. In founding SMU, members of the Methodist Church and the citizens of Dallas created a university as a separate corporate entity governed by the SMU Board of Trustees. So in 2021, so all this, these statements and stuff before were from 2019. In 2021, a judge ruled in favor of SMU in the lawsuit and dismissed the conference's lawsuit with prejudice. The conference appealed the verdict and Texas Fifth Court of Appeals reversed that dismissal in July of 2023, ruling that the conference had standing to challenge the school's 2019 governing document changes. The Texas Supreme Court set oral arguments in the case of SMU and the South Central Jurisdictional Conference for January of 2025. So that's coming up soon. And then they have it here. 
pretty close to the top, Southern Methodist University and Paul J. Ward versus South Central Jurisdictional Conference of the United Methodist Church and Bishop Scott Jones. So the interesting thing about all this is, of course, a lot of things have changed on the ground. The 2019 victory of the evangelicals was reversed, and so uh, now it's a progressive liberal woke denomination. And so does SMU really want to be... So, so the, what what becomes kind of clear is maybe SMU was just waiting on an excuse to separate. Maybe they haven't wanted to be associated with a larger body for some time, even if it's uh, ideologically in line with them. I do remember they put out a statement in 2019 just saying this doesn't reflect our values. Well, now it does reflect their values, but they're still filing suit. Um, and then the other funny thing is Scott Jones is now a GMC bishop. He's not even representing the UMC anymore, and yet he's named in the lawsuit. So just so many things have changed really quick. Um, I thought it would be good to read some history about SMU. Um, it was, uh, well, okay, let me just, uh, there was a period when the Methodist Episcopal Church and the MEC South were still separate before they got together, that both of them were planting seminaries all around. Methodism started off not very concerned about academic learning, but then in the 19th century, it got kind of obsessed with it, um, and the larger topic of respectability and social acceptance and all that fits into this concept. Uh, but here's here's uh, Watson on um, SMU. It begins with talking about Vanderbilt. One of the gems of Methodist education founded in the 19th century was Vanderbilt University. Vanderbilt was formed from the vision of the Methodist Episcopal Church South, Bishop Holland McTire, and the generosity of Cornelius Vanderbilt, who gave nearly $1 million to found the school. The school was planted in Nashville, Tennessee, which was an informal capital city for the MEC South at that time of the school's founding in 1873. By 1910, however, there were concerns the school was moving too far from its denominational identity. Attempts to reground the school as an MEC South institution ultimately failed, when the faculty declared their independence, the MEC South initially won a court decision, but the Tennessee Supreme Court overturned the ruling, essentially severing the MEC South's connection to the school. The MEC South responded in 1918 by founding schools to the geographic east and west of Nashville, including Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, and Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Duke arose as another prominent Methodist school the following decade. In an ironic twist of history, both SMU and Emory would declare their independence from the United Methodist Church just over 100 years later, largely due to objections to the UMC's adherence to the historic Christian understanding of marriage as a union between one man and one woman. So, of course, this was written since 2019, and that last fact is is utilized or referenced by Watson there. So, all that to say, we already have a lot of history. You know, what Vanderbilt went through with the MEC South is now being replicated by SMU and the UMC. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun. So anyway, I don't know what's going to happen there. I look forward to seeing what happens in January. Texas has largely been in favor of parties that file against the denomination. Almost everywhere else in the U.S. favors the denomination. Texas has been more willing to consider that the denomination doesn't hold authority. So I very much look forward to seeing what they do in January. All right, I'll look at the comments, and then, oh, we got Jared with us. Hey, brother. And then Aaron, is Perkins School of Theology looking at disaffiliating from the United Methodist Church? I have no idea. I should have brought up Perkins. Perkins is the seminary located at SMU in Dallas, and I don't think they are. I don't imagine that they are. I think that they're theologically aligned with them right now. Yeah, this is one of the things that's so awkward. The United Methodist Church has official seminaries that are kind of in, you know, SMU, uh, Perkins is in rebellion against them, and then United has uh, kind of thrown its hat in the ring with the GMC, not officially, but you got David Watson and others there that are much more sympathetic with the evangelical position. I don't know what the UMC Senate is going to do with these institutions. Um, yeah, that's an interesting topic. I haven't read anything about that. If anybody knows interest, anything about that, email it to me at plainspokenpod at gmail.com. <clears throat> 